Hello, I'm Tom Rothman, co-chairman of 20th Century Fox, and welcome to the Fox Movie Channel. We're glad to have you with us tonight. We're gonna sit here all night if we have to. The French Connection, which won Fox its seventh of nine Best Picture Oscars, is a textbook lesson in the skill and artistry required to turn real-life events into great movies. The French Connection was a real case, and Eddie Egan and Sonny Grasso, who cracked it, were real, larger-than-life detectives. The film is probably most famous today for its breathtaking car chase. The movie's producer, Phil D'Antoni, had just done Bullet, a film with another incredible car chase, and he was determined that the French Connection would outdo it, which, amazingly, it did. But that chase, filmed with absolute realism and played, interestingly, when you watch it, with no music, is just one of the many choices made by director Billy Friedkin to bring a gritty sense of the street and reality to the film. Friedkin had a background in documentaries, and he, he brought that feel to the cops and robbers genre, and that gave French Connection its breakthrough tone. Perhaps because of its unconventionality, the movie was passed on by every single studio in town, indeed, by some studios twice, before Dick Zanuck and 20th Century Fox agreed to take a chance on it. Another fascinating aspect of The French Connection, and one that is surprisingly common even in great films, is how different the final casting ended up from what was originally intended. Now, most people know the story that Humphrey Bogart was only the fourth choice to star in Casablanca, and yet, who can imagine that film today with anyone else? Well, likewise, Gene Hackman, who actually won the Academy Award for his portrayal of Eddie Egan's alter ego, Popeye Doyle, was far from the first choice for the role. Indeed, the director himself was unsure about Hackman at first. But to Xanax and the studio's credit, he actually wanted to make the movie without well-known and recognizable stars, something that was rare then and remains rare today. But even still, names as diverse as Rod Taylor, Jackie Gleason, Peter Boyle, and even the newspaper columnist Jimmy Breslin were considered as possible Popeyes. All right, Popeyes here. If you have any doubt that casting is an inexact science, think about the fact that Fernando Rey, the marvelously debonair villain in French Connection, was actually cast by mistake. Friedkin wanted an actor he saw in the French film Belle de Jour, and the casting director thought he meant Fernando Rey but he actually wanted a different guy. No one figured out the mistake until Ray showed up on the set and it was too late, he's in the film. Now in the mind's eye, who else would play that part? And indeed, who else but Gene Hackman could, borrowing from an actual speech the real life detective Egan used to terrify suspects by making him think he was actually crazier than they were, who else but Hackman? could tell you with such certainty, such conviction, that he was going to nail you for picking your feet in Poughkeepsie. Now, I'm going to bust your ass for those three bags, and I'm going to nail you for picking your feet in Poughkeepsie. So enjoy the French Connection. But whatever you do, stay away from Poughkeepsie. French Connection's a movie in which the cops are more than a little outside of convention, shall we say. The end of the famous chase scene finds Popeye Doyle, which was, Popeye was Eddie Egan's actual nickname, shooting the bad guy in the back. Hold on! Which, by the way, was something the real detective hated, but it made for the iconic visual imagery for the film, which is still famous today. And the movie ends with the bad guy getting away. Now this is, in fact, what happened in real life, but it's very uncommon in conventional Hollywood movies, which The French Connection clearly is not. Making a fictional film from a true story is a real balancing act, because you want, on the one hand, to be faithful to what happened, but you have to take, in the famous phrase, dramatic license. 
I think over the years I've come to believe that the key to it is to be faithful to the spirit of the original, faithful to the spirit of the truth as opposed to the literal truth. And in that way, whatever made the original story great is likely to make the fictional story great. Thanks for watching. Hope you had fun. I'm Tom Rothman for the Fox Movie Channel. We'll see you next time.